Hello everyone, welcome to MS Fabric Series by Unique. Today we'll be showcasing how to bring in Salesforce data inside MS Fabric for data analysis. We'll be covering the do's, the don'ts, and some killer tips and tricks that you can use to facilitate this entire process seamlessly. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, let's take a look at how data is stored inside Salesforce. Salesforce is a cloud CRM, which means you cannot directly connect to their databases and access their data for any kind of, you know, data analysis. All your valuable business information is exposed only through an API. But does that mean you have to facilitate API integration to bring in data into MS Fabric? Not really. Let's take a look at some of the options that we have. Yes, you have three fantastic options. The first option, Pipeline. It has native connector to connect with Salesforce. They are super easy to set up. Just a few configurations, your data starts flowing into MS Fabric. But that is a catch. Pipelines does not allow to upsert your data in destination tables. What does this really mean? What do you mean by it cannot allow upsets? It means even if you need to update few records in MS Fabric, you will end up overwriting millions of records every time you run the migration. Pipelines allow you to facilitate only appending of your data to your destination or overwriting the existing data altogether. So this can get extremely expensive because MS Fabric's cost is directly connected to the resources that it consumes. So imagine you are reprocessing billions of information again and again and again. You know, that can cost you really well. Exactly. That's why you should use pipelines only when you have smaller data sets or just need to append new data in MS Fabric tables. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you want to facilitate transformations on the data that is being migrated from Salesforce into MS Fabric, you need to be aware that the Spark Sessions concept in MS Fabric cannot be utilized here. So that is another limitation that we have identified. So what is the next best option that we have? Let's take a look. The next option is Dataflow, another user-friendly tool. Just a few configurations. You are ready to bring in Salesforce data. But remember, just like pipelines, Dataflow don't allow upsurge. So you are still only appending or overwrite. But the cool part, if you need to transform your data before it hits MS Fabric, Dataflow lets you tap into Spark capabilities to do just that. As we said, Dataflow is very similar to pipelines, except for the fact that you can leverage the Spark context in MS Fabric to facilitate any kind of transformation on the Salesforce data that is getting migrated. But the challenge of overwriting all your data again and again remains the same. Yes, that's why you have another amazing option which offers much more flexible. What is that? Coding? Coding can be extremely scary for anybody. Not really. With the Python package called Simple Salesforce, you can write few lines of PySpark code to bring in Salesforce data in no time. He is absolutely right. The advantage of taking this approach is that you can overcome all the challenges from the other two options we saw so far. If you want to keep your migration lightweight, you can do so by just updating the couple of records that needs to be updated. And as an added bonus, you can facilitate Spark sessions to do all your transformations during the migration. All right, let's see all options in action. In order to use the pipeline to bring in Salesforce data, let's go to your workspace. Click New, select More Options. We need to select the Data Pipeline option in the Data Factory category. Let's go ahead and give it a unique name and click on Create. And that's it. We have created our pipeline and we are redirected to the Pipeline Canvas. Here, we need to add the Copy Data activity by clicking on Copy Data and adding it to the Canvas. This is a generic activity which is used to bring in data from varieties of data sources. And let's take a look at how to configure this for Salesforce. Let's give it a unique name. 
Let's go ahead and configure our source connection. We need to search for Salesforce from here. So once we find the Salesforce connector, we need to select the Salesforce objects. The next step is to provide your Salesforce credentials, log into the instance. So now the authentication is successful. We have successfully connected to your Salesforce instance from within MS Fabric. Here you have the option to search any object from your Salesforce instance and select that to be migrated into MS Fabric. Not just that, we can even preview the data from your Salesforce instance just by clicking on the preview data button. And this can help you see through and browse the data and the kind of columns the table has. Now it's time to configure our destination here. So let's connect to our lake house and we need to select the table that we want to be the destination. Since I do not have a table here, I'm trying to create one. Setting up the schema for your destination table is pretty simple. You need to click on mapping and just import schema from your source table. It will automatically pull all the columns from your source table and map it to the destination table to define the schema. Here you have the option to preview all the columns and its data types and how it gets converted into a different data type within MS Fabric. You have the option to delete some of the columns, rearrange, change the data types, whatever you want before you facilitate this migration. And that's it, your pipeline has been validated and uh, you're good to save and run this pipeline. Not just that, you can schedule this pipeline to run at a particular frequent basis. And that's it with pipelines, it's as simple as this. It just took few minutes, isn't it? Let's move on and take a look at how to do the same thing with data flows. Ingesting Salesforce data flows is quite similar to pipelines. All you need to do is click new, more options, very similar to pipelines. You are landed on this page, but instead of the pipelines, you will choose the data flow gen two. Here you need to choose the get data option. Click on more. You can choose your data source, search for Salesforce and select the Salesforce objects here. Similar to pipelines, here again, you will have to provide your credentials to log into Salesforce to proceed. Once you log into Salesforce, we get to browse the Salesforce objects. So you can select any of the objects from Salesforce for you to facilitate the ingestion. You have the option to preview the data right here. Um, this is a slightly different window from pipelines where you get to see all the objects uh, along with the preview element attached to it. Once you're good with the selection, you can go ahead and create this data flow. After this, you will land in the Power Query Editor where you can preview your data and facilitate any kind of transformations or formatting your data needs. Once you're done with facilitating the transformations, you have to choose your destination target. So we need to connect to the lake house and uh, either create a new table or you know, select one of your existing table to facilitate ingestion here. We are creating a new table. The schema is inferred automatically from the data source, but um, you have the option to make some changes to it before it gets applied to the destination. Once all the source and the destinations are configured, it's time to publish and refresh the state flow. This might take a few minutes for you to refresh. And once you have refreshed, you will be able to see all your data migrated into your destination table. As you see here, the table is created and all your data got migrated from Salesforce into MS Fabric with just few configurations. And uh, you have the option to utilize path sessions to use any kind of transformations here as well. With that, we'll move on to the next option that we have. Before we get started with writing the notebook code to ingest Salesforce data, there are some prerequisites that 
we need to take care of. To start with, we need to configure an environment where this code can actually run. Environments are typically used to configure different Spark runtimes or configure some, you know, unique compute resources or to install libraries that are required for the execution of your. To create an environment, click on New, More Options. Under the Data Engineering category, select Environment, provide a unique name for it, and click on Create. For this particular use case, we require a library called Simple Salesforce. So click on Add from Python Library Packages and search the Simple Salesforce library. And you have to save your changes and publish them for use in your notebooks. Let's take a look at how to create the notebook. To create a notebook, select New, More Options, and under the Data Engineering category, click on Notebook. You can provide a suitable name for your notebook. Now let's change the default environment to the newly created one where we have installed all the plugins. And now we are good to get started with our coding. To start with, let's import the simple Salesforce and the Pandas library, which are required to facilitate all sorts of processing of your Salesforce data here. We are hard coding some of the values like the usernames, passwords, and some security tokens. But you can decide to pass these as variables as well to this code to make it reusable. In order to establish the connection to Salesforce instance, we need to create a session and connect to it. And uh, here is the code. You can use the Salesforce login function and pass in the required fields to create a session. The next step is to write a query to fetch the required data. So as you see here, you can select any of the objects from Salesforce and write a simple SQL-like query to be executed against the Salesforce instance. Using the simple query function in the Salesforce library, we can execute this query as seen on the screen and you can fetch all the records that are retrieved. Now we are uh, getting all the records and transforming them into a pandas data frame using the pandas data library and its functions. But we cannot process the pandas data frames straight away. You need to convert them to Spark data frames in order to persist all this data into the delta tables in MS Fabric. Now we have written a code to append all the data that is fetched um, using this particular line of code. As you are seeing here, we are passing in the actual path, the table path, the destination path from the lake house to facilitate this writing of your data onto the destination. This could also be parameterized if you would require. And now we have finished writing the code. As you see, it's fairly simple. And now we need to start the Spark session through which this code will be executed. Uh, currently, we have initiated the standard session, but you can choose to switch it to the concurrent sessions if you would like to facilitate parallel processing if you are dealing with, you know, millions of records. Now let's go ahead and run this code. As you are seeing here, the code is getting uh, you know, executed and all the data is getting migrated from Salesforce. You can schedule this notebook also to run on a frequent basis to bring in data as and when there are delta changes in the source. And with that, we have come to the end of how to facilitate data migrations from Salesforce using PySpark coding in MS Fabric. And there you have it, folks. Three ways to migrate Salesforce data to MS Fabric, each with its own strengths. Whether you're keeping it simple with pipelines, transforming with data flows, or going full on coding with PySpark, MS Fabric has got all the tools that you need to get it done right. Thank you so much for tuning in and see.